evening supermarket. Near one of the shelves, a young man is talking on the phone with his wife. The woman is irritated, and the guy is trying to justify himself. He didn't intentionally almost buy the wrong product, and his purchase of a PlayStation has nothing to do with it, and they wouldn't have been able to relax in Alupka even with that money. He went there for work. At the checkout, there are three people in line. The first is a man who looks a bit homeless. The cashier announces the total, and the man is short of 10 rubles. He tries to persuade the cashier, but she remains firm. So, the man turns to those waiting in line. If they care about the fate of a person, they should lend him the missing amount. He asks them to think that they are all preparing for a terrible judgment. And what will they be able to tell when facing the Almighty? While the man delivers this speech, people react differently. One person leaves the line altogether. The man turns to a young guy. It seems like he's not destitute. So, what are 10 rubles to him? A woman standing behind him takes out a coin. The man thanks her and says that angels won't forget her, and perhaps this act will outweigh all her sins. Then he takes out 50 rubles from his pocket and gives it to the cashier. He returns the coin to woman, places a 10 ruble coin on the counter, and tells the young guy that he will need it. The man adds that he will have something to remember. In hell. The homeless man leaves and the young guy makes the payment. The cashier asks for change, 10 rubles, and he hands her the homeless man's coin. The young guy exits to an empty parking lot. He continues his phone conversation, again justifying himself for some business trip and a woman whom his wife is jealous of. He sees the man who was sitting on the curb earlier. He approaches and gives him the coin because he doesn't need someone else's. The homeless man asks, is he afraid of burning in the fiery Gehenna? Perhaps he believes in the Lord? The guy confesses that he's not very religious, to which the homeless man inquires, so, after death, he plans to become worm food? Is that the pinnacle of his life? The guy says he's a mathematician and believes in the exact sciences. He asks if there's any evidence of God's existence. The homeless man claims there is an undeniable fact. The guy starts making fun of him and suggests taking a break from doing nothing on the way back. The homeless man starts crying. The guy is confused about what upset him so much. He reassures the homeless man, telling him he's young and he has everything ahead of him. It's the right time to think about the future because it all depends on him. By the way, he mentioned earlier that he can provide evidence of God's existence. And the homeless man calmly says that he saw Jesus himself because he is the eternal Jew, the one who didn't let the Lord rest at his house when he was carrying his cross. He told Jesus that he would rest on the way back. Jesus agreed, but he would have to wait for him. The guy asks again, and this happened 2,000 years ago. The homeless man understands that it does indeed sound strange. He was amazed at first too, but then he got used to it. So, for him, the existence of Jesus Christ is a fact. However, he can't prove it in any way. He didn't keep a piece of clothing that Jesus wore. And how could he prove that it wasn't a piece of his own underwear? He doesn't have the cup from which Christ drank or the stone from under his cross. The guy concedes that the Jew saw Jesus. What was he like? The homeless man says he was just like everyone else, only tormented. He also doesn't remember his face. The guy remembers all the faces he's seen in his life. The guy is puzzled and asks again to tell him what happened. The Jew says that Jesus was being led past his house under guard. He stopped to rest and the Jew forbade him to lean on his house. After all, he called himself the Son of God. It was outrageous, so he told him that he would rest on the way back and God ordered him to wait for him. He couldn't know who he really was, and no one could. The guy asks if the Jew is ashamed that he didn't let Jesus rest. The homeless man asks, maybe that was God's plan? The guy asks if he tried to make amends for it. Maybe become a clergyman, for example. The conversation partner admits that he tried that many times, but no one descended from the heavens, and no indulgence was granted. The guy asks, what else has he been throughout all these years? Maybe an immortal killer, an immortal killer. That would be cool. The Jew objects. Being immortal is cool in movies, but in real life, you need to find food, seek warmth, and wait, like waiting in line. He has already studied all the ads on the walls, all the holes in the couch, but people keep coming and going. It's no longer interesting to him who stood where in the hierarchy, whose place was more comfortable, who jumped the queue. The guy inquires, what is he waiting for? The second coming or the end of the world? The homeless man nods, maybe both. No one knows when the end will come. 
The guy is puzzled again, but an ordinary person is afraid of death. So is the homeless man. He's eternal, but if you cut off one of his fingers, he won't keep living with four fingers. He's broken his bones many times. But what if a tank shoots him in the head? Will he be an undying headless man? The homeless man confidently says that won't happen. Hasn't he tried to end his life himself? The Jew nods. Of course, he even tried to hang himself in the very beginning. He hung from a tree for two weeks with excruciating pain in his throat until the branch broke. Later, in 1945, he was captured by the fascists and got scared. He tried to shoot himself. The gun jammed. It was exploded, shredding his whole arm with shrapnel. But everything healed. He came to Russia from Poland 40 years ago. The guy is curious again. Maybe he's just schizophrenic, and doesn't it bother him at all? How did he decide that all these events were real? The homeless man shows his arm. He made notches. 920, 1464, 1812. Decades pass. And he sits and thinks, maybe he scratched them yesterday, put the dates, as if 200 years had passed. And he asks for help to figure it out, like stabbing him with a knife, for example. But the guy refuses. He doesn't want to explain to the police that he saw Jesus and shouldn't have died. The homeless man shrugs, saying, that's how it works. They walk across the parking lot. The guy asks him to tell something from history. For instance, what was happening in the first century? The homeless man responds, well, in general, it was the same. Shepherds herded sheep and fishermen fished. The guy insists, but in the world, the significant appearance of Jesus, church reforms, any mysteries and intrigues. The homeless man in puzzlement asks, where does he know all this from? He also learned it from books. Now, the guy remembers where he was in August 2000. Throughout the ages, he just lived. He was in different countries. It's just that the body requires a warm place and a piece of bread. As for how neighbors reacted to him being eternally alive and forever young, they didn't pay much attention to him and he didn't stay in one place for long. Does he know ancient languages? He does, but now they are considered dead and who can verify them? The men touch upon the topic of space. The homeless man has seen many strange things, but he hasn't encountered extraterrestrials. The most pressing question, can it really be that in all this diversity of worlds, there are no other forms of life? The guy comments that it's all too profound for a homeless, possibly heavy drinking man. The homeless man leaves and the guy locks his car and follows him. He asks, why did Jesus punish him? Shouldn't he be all forgiving? The Jew says that it wasn't Jesus who punished him at all. He cursed himself with his own words, and the Lord simply fulfilled his own wish. The biggest curse is not that he's been waiting for a thousand years, but that he, like a dull shepherd, remained the same. A person who creates, lives a spiritually enriched life. The guy doesn't believe it. It just can't be. After all, he's been living for so long. He knows much more than others. Surely he met great people like Michelangelo or Nietzsche. To this, the homeless man retorts, How can you understand what they'll say about this specific person after death, that he was a genius? The guy asks how people lived, what they thought and what they believed in a thousand years ago. The homeless man responds, They believed the earth was flat, that God sat in the sky above the clouds and watched every step. But if he is simply looking through our own eyes, then he is just an observer, and he can't judge us for our actions, right? It means he is concerned about our actions only as much as they concern us. And if God is in everyone, then so is the devil. The guy teases him. Those are some profound words for a weird man. The homeless man smiles. In a certain sense, a person always has a choice. And fate exists. The fate of a person is determined by their choice. But at any moment, they can stop choosing that fate and start choosing another. So why, even in the modern world, are people willing to kill those who don't share their faith? You just need to make an effort to keep your opinion about someone else's religion to yourself. A person finds something sacred for themselves, and it gives their life meaning, but then they start comparing their primary gender characteristics. They try to prove that their meaning is more significant and more important than another person's. Of course, it leads to conflict. His wife calls again. The guy apologizes and says he hasn't finished yet. He met an interesting person and got engrossed in conversation. She says she'll come over now. He goes back to the homeless man and sits down next to him. The guy asks, why is he homeless if he's so intelligent? And why doesn't he want to change anything? The homeless man says he's living like he's preparing for a big exam, postponing the transformation of his life for later. The conversation partner says he's living somewhat similarly, 
but he doesn't want to think about death. He's still very young after all. The Jew reassures him, you won't even notice how it passes. No matter what a person does, middle age arrives, and then old age. And deep down, every old man feels like a little boy. The guy says he doesn't want to think about old age and death. Probably that's why people invented religion, to make it seem like there's something after death. Then he smiles and says that he's been clearly fooled. His conversation partner hasn't lived for 2,000 years. He doesn't seem crazy, but maybe he has a special organism. Cells divide more frequently. The body constantly regenerates. Unique genetics, perhaps. Probably, they can make medicine from his blood. It can't be that he hasn't done anything remarkable throughout his life. He was in Poland during World War II. Did he hide Jews? The Jew laughs. He is a Jew himself. It was a Polish family that hid him, and then they were discovered and taken as prisoners. That's when he tried to shoot himself. The guy laments. Well, yes, times were tough. The homeless man disagrees. Times are always the same. The conversation partner is astonished, but how can that be? Everything has changed in the world. If you trace history from the Middle Ages to the present day, a lot has changed. The Jew says that everything changes if you pay attention to those changes every day. Just like a river flows, rages, and is never the same. However, the way that river flowed a hundred years ago is the same way it flows today, in the same channel. The guy becomes more animated and asks the homeless man what he thinks about the paradox of faith. Can God create a stone that he can't lift? The homeless man explains, it's a paradox of the mind. If he's a scientific atheist, he'd agree that all information about the surrounding world enters the mind through the senses. The idea of God is in his mind, so the problem is in his mind. God in your mind can't create a stone in your mind that he's about to lift in your own mind. The guy is puzzled, but if he can't lift it, then he's not all-powerful. The homeless man advises him not to overcomplicate things in his mind. The conversation partner sighs. He would like to get some answers. The homeless man says he would like to get some answers too. For example, he wants to know what our purpose is, or what happens after death, or what one needs to accomplish in life. Then he asks the guy what he personally would do if he lived for a thousand years. Seeing the guy pondering, he concludes, he would simply live and nothing else. On the first day, he'd jump for joy. And then, the guy is puzzled. How can one realize oneself as an immortal person then? After all, if humans are God's creations, why did he create them? There must be some meaning to it, right? The homeless man agrees. There must be, but he doesn't know it. And he doesn't know a single person who has realized themselves. Even those who entered history feel like something is missing. Take Hitler, for example. Even if one imagines that he genuinely believed in the ideas he propagated and wanted to change the course of history, did he realize himself? No. He spent his entire life becoming and embodying the caricature of a villain with a mustache. Did he realize the spark inside him? The one that made people stand up and follow him? He doesn't know if one can realize themselves within the framework of our world. So how can a person get to heaven if there's a devil inside them? The homeless man says that all human emotions are manifestations of fear. The part of a person that lives in that fear experiences eternal torment in hell, but the other part of them is love. Even in the Bible, it's written that God is love. To get to heaven, one must choose God within themselves. The guy asks, are you God? The homeless man laughs. He's unpredictable. Sometimes he calls him a homeless man, and sometimes God. He's a human being. But in him, just like in everyone else, there's a bit of God, a bit of love. But surely God must have had a purpose for him. He can't just have left him to live forever and await the end of the world for no reason. There must be meaning in all of this. And the Jew retells Plato's words. Horses are born and die, but they're just embodiments of the idea of a horse which lives forever. Likewise, people are born and die, but they're just embodiments of the idea of a human which lives forever. It will live until the end of humanity. Their meeting has no symbolism. He can consider that he just met the idea of a human, which he's always met, even in the mirror. All of them are embodiments of the idea of a human. Tall, short, sad, happy, lazy, successful, full, gloomy, and open. They all think they are unique, but new ones come to replace them. Year after year, century after century, they were children yesterday, and today they are already old. But even so, new ones come to take their place, running, jumping, munching, and leaving in just the same way. A phone notification rings. A woman walks around his car in the parking lot. 
The guy introduces the homeless man, saying he's the one who has seen Jesus himself. The woman thinks he's mocking her. She drove across the entire city, and he's here with a vagabond. The guy tries to explain. Then a man with the same face as the homeless man approaches and yells at him. He's been looking for him for over an hour. Bags won't carry themselves. The homeless man leaves with him. The guy is bewildered. They are identical. The woman says he's gone mad and gets into her car, driving away. The guy gets into his car and looks in the mirror. The eyes of a Hasveris are looking at him, 